people horrified at what Michigan has suddenly let citizens do in mass murder empowerment zones. Sometimes, to prevent something bad from happening, you've got to try and understand the mind of the person who might perpetrate it. For instance, if I wanted to show off how fast my car was, I might choose to race some car that is known to have less power than mine. Probably not a Ferrari, if I wanted to show off my physical strength, I wouldn't choose a bodybuilder to pick a fight with. And if I wanted to shoot up a building, I wouldn't do it at a gun show. Let's take a moment to just think about the two recent shootings in Sutherland Springs and Las Vegas. Both took place where the intended victims weren't expected to be armed, and both were wildly successful on the part of the shooter. In the past, we've also seen mass shootings happen in theaters and schools which are both places where guns are typically banned. Are you seeing a trend yet? Bullies pick on people they don't expect to fight back. If we truly want to prevent mass shootings, we need to give people the ability to fight back just like the Founding Fathers did. According to USA Today, the Michigan Senate Committee is trying to do just that. They've approved a bill that would allow concealed carry of firearms in gun-free zones. In the wake of mass shootings in Las Vegas and Texas that left dozens of people dead or injured, a Michigan Senate committee approved bills Tuesday that will allow gun owners to carry concealed weapons in gun-free zones such as schools, churches, daycare centers, bars, dorms and stadiums. The shooting at a Baptist church in Sutherland Springs, Texas, on Sunday which left 26 people dead and 20 more injured, makes state Senate Majority Leader Arlen Meekoff, a Republican from West Olive, Michigan, more certain that now is the time to take up the gun legislation. Some have said it's insensitive to bring up these issues now, but I feel quite the opposite, he told a standing room only crowd in the Senate Government Operations Committee. The recent events will allow us to look at how we can deter those who want to do harm. And responsible, well trained, licensed concealed pistol holders can be one of those deterrents. Obviously, most of us have not been the victim of a mass shooting, but we can guess at what those people would want is for no one else to ever have to live through that horror. In the case of the shooting in Texas, the only thing that stopped the gunman from killing even more people was a card-carrying member of the NRA pulling out his legally obtained and well-loved firearm and returning fire. This bill isn't out of the woods yet though. While it has had surprising support, it's not without its opposition either. Some consider any firearms to be bad for business in places like schools. The bills taken up in the Senate Government Operations Committee passed on a party-line vote with Republicans supporting the three-bill package and Democrats opposing it. The bills also would close the open carry loophole, effectively barring gun owners from openly carrying their weapons in gun-free zones. That's the part that causes the schools to shut down and lose a day of educational experience for students and that's problematic, Mikoff said. He gained support from gun rights groups, including the National Rifle Association and the Michigan Coalition for Responsible Gun Owners. The idea of having the ability to arm a well-qualified, well-trained individual is tantamount to setting out a scenario where we no longer set up a sheep for the wolf said Robert Rudowski of the Gun Owners Group. Gun-free zones should be called mass murderer empowerment zones, said Steve Jelen, spokesman for the Gun Owners Group. But far more people were at the committee hearing to speak out against the bill, including school groups and Moms Demand Action, which has been fighting for more gun controls. Tragedies are going to happen. But we're concerned this change could create more accidental incidents and the additional training doesn't come close to training an individual for high-intensity situations, said Don Waterba, executive director of the Michigan Association of School Boards. Unless you're trained from military or police perspective, you're not well trained. We've all heard it said that if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself, and the same goes for personal safety. That's always been the mantra of Americans who hold the Second Amendment near and dear to our hearts. Personally, I have the utmost respect for my local law enforcement and find their attendance at my local church a great solace, but they just can't be everywhere at once. As it was so well said about the recent Texas shooting, the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. We can't all be law enforcement, but we can, 
as adults, get our concealed carry permits and help protect those near and dear to us. Here's more from our source about the details of the bill before Michigan state lawmakers. Emily Durbin, Michigan chapter president of Moms Demand Action, said the debate was definitely on the wrong track. Two days after the latest shooting, we're here not having a conversation about keeping guns away from domestic abusers, increasing background checks or banning bump stocks, she said. Instead, we're urgently discussing what the gun lobby wants and that's a desire to have more guns in more places, no questions asked. Michigan Governor Rick Snyder, a Republican, vetoed similar legislation in 2012, just four days after a horrific shooting in Newtown, Connecticut, when a heavily armed man muscled his way into Sandy Hook Elementary School and killed 21st graders and six adults. Snyder said the bill had a fatal loophole that didn't allow for those institutions to opt out of the new legislation and prohibit weapons from their buildings. His spokeswoman, Anna Heaton, said Tuesday that Snyder hasn't seen the latest version of the concealed carry bills and hadn't taken a position on them. Mikoff said he has talked with Snyder about the new legislation and that he's not necessarily on board with it. The new legislation would allow schools to prohibit students, both minors and adults, from carrying concealed weapons in schools. The bill also is expected to be amended on the Senate floor, perhaps as soon as Wednesday, to allow schools to prohibit employees from carrying concealed weapons in schools. The legislation also would allow private businesses, such as bars, to declare themselves gun-free zones. We're not going to preempt the private property owner's right to post for a weapon-free zone, said Mikoff spokeswoman, Amber McCann. The additional training for the concealed carry license would be for more hours of classroom sessions and more time on the gun range. Tom Lambert, president of the Michigan Open Carry Organization, opposed the bills because they would bar gun owners from openly carrying their weapons. He supports gun owners being able to carry guns however they want. It is asinite to me that we would create an uneven playing field and give mass murderers an advantage, he said. I would agree guns should not be in our schools. The problem is we can't stop somebody who is truly intent on evil. But the Michigan Education Association had a different perspective. Education and parent groups have joined us in opposing this misguided legislation because they, too, understand that the answer to gun violence is not more guns in schools, in fact, that's a recipe for disaster, Michigan Education Association President Paula Herbart said in a statement. The only people who should be allowed to carry firearms in public schools are police officers and school security personnel, period, period.